So the theatrical elements of the exorcisms were thought by many to expose them to be merely fraudulent performances. They were staged to trick people into believing in the power of the exorcist and the faith that he represented. That Catholic exorcisms could not be trusted because they were theatrical was a common critique leveled against them particularly. Um, this is a critique particularly made by Puritans in England. The theater itself was thought to be dangerous because it traded in illusion and spectacle. Puritans argued that the Protestant religion had done away with all the performative elements that were used within the Catholic Church and was thus a more authentic and true religion. They wrote that Christ and his apostles used no such fond coats at the ministration of the sacrament. Christ allows no pomp nor pride, but all simplicity and plainness. They argued that Catholicism was empty, was just ritual with no religious substance, because it separated the believer from Christ through, through the theatrics of the priests and the Pope. This was what the Puritans claimed. Of course, this is also a time when the theater itself was growing in popularity. Attending a play was a popular pastime, and theaters performed the plays of Shakespeare and Ben Jonson, who were contemporaries of this time, among others. The Globe Theater was opened in 1599. Here's, uh, in a moment, we'll see a slide of Shakespeare's Globe Theater. The Rose Theater was opened in 1587. We also have very thea various theatrical troops. Among them were the King's Men as well as the Queen's Men who would do um, performances um, at the courts uh, of, of the royalty. So here's, here's Shakespeare's um, globe and how the common people would stand along the stage here in this open open space, it was open to the elements, and then people of varying um, social hierarchies would sit in in these enclosed spaces. Here, of course, those those are the higher ranks would sit higher higher up. Um, although the theater was very popular at this time, it was not without its um, controversy and critics. Playhouses were one of the prime sites of crime, where pickpockets and prostitutes could ply their trade in relative secret. And it was um, a relatively new kind of public space that entered into the imagination of, of what the city was, of places within the city that were both um, exciting and dangerous at the same time. Beggars um, and criminals of various uh, types were thought to employ the tricks of the actors to make themselves appear to be more sympathetic to passers-by. The body was thought to be able to trick people. So common beggars, women, women who were beggars would often make themselves look to be pregnant in order to gain more sympathy. So the problem of um, taking on a disguise was thought to be um, very um, deceptive and problematic at this time. And, and part of the reason why these, why these issues were put together in the minds of, of contemporary English people was that the theater was a new space in this particular moment. So it was, it was on people's minds. So in books and pamphlets written in England that critiqued the theater, Puritans used the analogy of the Catholic Church to describe the theater as a space of dissimulation and masquerade, leading an unsuspecting audience away from true religion through the appeal of spectacle. So Catholicism and the theater were closely related in both anti-theatrical and anti-Catholic texts. They were both argued to deceive through fraud and performance, which enticed everyone's baser senses Catholicism and the theater were threatening to playgoers and society in general because of their mutual expertise in manipulating the senses through sound, spectacle, and gesture. Plays instructed people through the actors taking on roles that depicted illicit and sinful behavior often. 
in a popular and well-known um, critique of the theater, Stephen Gossin, who is a contemporary, wrote in his work, a Plays Confuted in Five Actions is the title, he wrote, writes, Vice is learned with beholding. Sense is tricked, desire pricked, and those impressions of mind are secretly conveyed over to the gazers, which the players do counterfeit on stage. Women were thought to be especially susceptible to these dangers because of their limited rational faculties and their emotions were stronger than their, their reason. Consequently, the theater was considered by some to be a place that led women toward lust and licentiousness and through their presence in the audience they were also seen as a danger to men that this was a shared um, space of both sexes was was thought to be problematic but to some and i don't know if you noticed this but um, in his letter the letter by thomas Killigrew, he employs theatrical metaphors to suggest that the exorcisms that he witnessed would potentially um, mere imitations or fraudulent suggests a certain amount of skepticism on his part. As you may have noticed, he invokes the theater and, and particularly a specific play in order to bring the legitimacy of the possessions into question. Killigrew refers to Ben Jonson's play, The Devil is an Ass, which was performed in 1616 and published and circulated in print in 1631. And this this play was um, one that brought the issue of demonic possession and exorcism into common, comic relief on the London stage. In one scene, um, Pug, who is the demon at the center of Johnson's play, says to another character, uh, Fritz, Fitz Drottle, I will teach you such tricks to make your belly swell and your eyes turn, to foam, to stare, to gnash your teeth together and beat yourself laugh loud and feign six voices. Throughout the play, Johnson emphasizes the illusory nature of the symptoms of possession and that with the right skills, demonic possession could be faked. So not only does the theater serve a rhetorical purpose in critiquing exorcisms, but critics thought that tricks could learn for the stage were also used in order for people to fake being possessed by a demon that the situation at Loudon was merely a staged performance meant to en encourage uh, the conversion to Catholicism was certainly the way that many contemporary people interpreted the events at the, at the Abbey. Pamphlets, pamphlets published in, in, in English that were meant to discredit um, exorcisms were, were pretty popular at this time. One of the pamphlets uh, that was published exhibits both the confessional as well as the theatrical nature of the Loudon possessions and exorcisms. And here's, here's the title, and I'll just read it out loud for you. A relation of the devil Balaam's departure out of the body of the mother prioress of the Ursuline nuns of Loudon, her fearful motions and contortions during the exorcism, with the extract of the process verbal touching the exorcisms wrought at Loudon by order of the bishop, bishop of Poitiers, under the authority of the king, printed at Orléans in 1635, or, and this was a subtitle that was added um, to the English translation, the first part of the play acted at Loudon by two devils, a friar and a nun, faithfully translated out of the French copy with some observations for the better illustration of the pamphlet. So you can see here both the political nature, the confessional political nature, of exorcisms, um, as well as the more humorous, skeptical side um, that and stance that people could take in, in the author's kind of reference to, to the fact that this was merely a, a pageant, a play that was acted by the priests and the nuns at Loudon. So through this case of Loudon, the Loudon possessions, we can see both the religious and political nature of witchcraft trials as well as the confessional disputes that were inherently involved and exorcisms. Whether or not accusations went to trial and the witch was found guilty was still very much dependent upon 
the local relationships as well as the confessional um, politics involved in the particular community at this time.